Hey, this is Jack Downs with a brief video about um, for people who were not in class, uh, JOU 127, today, Thursday, uh, September 28th. I know a number of people missed class, a few people missed class for various reasons. Um, and I want to bring you up to speed. Um, of course, what most of the class was take up with was presentations. We had presentations, the uh, entomology name presentations from a great good number of most of the class for sure. And um, uh, a makeup presentation too. And speaking of makeup presentations, that means I'm really hoping that you can do your presentation on Tuesday when we're going to be doing some other stuff too. Um, and I'll go over that here in just a minute. So that means you need to practice. So that also means uh, you need to get a hold of the TAs, you have the contact information, and try to set up a practice and or with me try to set up a practice, hopefully tomorrow, uh, it'd be Friday, or perhaps on Monday, um, or maybe even over the weekend with the TAs. Um, so you do need to practice before you present. And remember, you got to do all the presentations to get through this class, so if you're getting behind, you better get going. Um, and um, the look at the schedule, of course, I went over what was due and, and so on in class, not with the, not with the Brightspace, but of course, you can always find it on Brightspace. That was the presentation, is what we did today. Um, I'm asking people, reminding people to work on the SPS exercise, which is due next class. So to remind you, I, and you should have a handout on this, and you should have a, a sheet of examples too. That's to write four specific, pur specific purpose statements. There's more to it than that though, because they have to be of four different types, concept, object, process event also you have to write the central thesis that means you mean that means you need the main ideas which you then have to list also as main ideas and to get main ideas you needed to have a source so i need you to list two sources for each one so it's kind of like coming up with four speech ideas which are even a little more developed because you got started with sources and you listed your main ideas um, and that's what we're doing is it's a good way to practice coming up with speech ideas. Inf these are all informative. Um, and you need to bring those on paper to next class. Um, so please do that. Um, and I'll pick them up there afterwards. Um, and so on. Uh, now, in addition to um, the SPSs, you were to have read chapter 9. And then for next class, to read chapter 10. We are nearing the end of the reading. Um, however, uh, it's been I've been pushing it to you very quickly. And remember, you should be keeping up with your study guide. Or when you do this reading, you should do it with the study guide too. It's true um, there'll be a little gap in the reading before too long, and you'll have time to catch up a little more. But try to keep up with what you can. Have you been reviewing word distinctions? I did not suggest that to people yet, so don't worry about that. But however, don't forget there's the rhetorical analysis paper out there. You go, you go watch the uh, one of those TED Talks and then write about it, write an essay about it with certain structure that I tell you about. Um, and if you looked in further ahead in the schedule, you'd see what it's due. And of course, it's listed on the assignment sheet too. So that is the schedule. Let me know if you have any questions or problems. Um, and then uh, we did the presentations. And then, of course, when they were done, as is usually the case, I gave out excuse me for yawning there, I gave out a uh, the start of what is our next presentation. Now, it's not due for a little while, but the break is in there, which will make things seem like they go much faster. Um, so if you remember, when we come back after break, that's our first exam, which I'm going to be, in our last class before break, I'll be doing a review for. So you're going to have that exam. That would be on a Thursday is when you're back from break. Then then a week from then will be this, this next presentation, which is called the introduction presentation. And I gave out two handouts. I'm not going to attach them, but you can find them on Brightspace. And here is one of them, the informative introduction presentation. It talks about it right here. Um, and I'll just review it on Brightspace. So the idea is, and you could use one of your, in fact, it'd save you time if you use one of the, um, one of the structures you come up with for the SPS exercise, probably be even corrected based on what you learn at, at, during that, during next class. 
So the idea is you're going to come up with uh, an SPS for an informative presentation. You actually have to create the paperwork for this too. There's more paperwork for this than in the past. Um, you're going to be doing the introduction for one of those. So uh, starting with the SPS you already started to develop will, be, will give you a head start. You're just going to do the introduction and that's going to be it. Uh, but you're going to do an introduction which is much fuller than you've done before. Much more meat to it. Um, it's not timed, but we're thinking it's going to be a substantial amount of introduction. So the introduction is going to begin with three attention getting devices, which is a lot. I know it's a lot. But in the typed paperwork that goes along with it, you're going to list those attention getting devices and tell me how you're going to use them. Of course, on your index cards, you're actually going to write out what you're going to do. And you might, it might, this introduction might take two index cards. It shouldn't be more than that, though. Maybe just one. You will be using index card. Then, of course, for my paperwork, not for your index card, you're going to write your specific purpose statement. Your general purpose is to inform. This will be to inform my audience something, and you're going to label it as, as object, process, event, or concept. You're going to write your central thesis, which means you may need main ideas, and you will need, need main ideas in your introduction because you have to uh, um, give us the signposted preview statement, which lists the main ideas. So your central thesis will have the main ideas in it. You're going to label it as topical, chronological, causal, or spatial. So you're gonna, you will have labeled both your, your SPS, right? And you will label your central thesis. Here's something different and new and expanded. Because this shows you that this, this presentation really is to some degree a lot about the paperwork. You need to create a preparation outline as if you were giving the entire speech. The outline will be for the, not just for the, for the introduction, but pre, for the entire speech, which you're not going to give. You're only doing the introduction. See your textbook chapter 11 for what a preparation outline looks like. I will be review, reviewing this in class at some point, but it'd be better for you to also go look at it in the text now and, and see what that, what is a preparation outline. And as part of that, you have to have a bibliography for the sources you use in the introduction. So I need you to cite at least two sources in the introduction. And that's different too. So all of a sudden our introduction has three attention getting devices. And then you have to list two sources. Well, this is where your introduction becomes, has a persuasive element to it, even though it's an informative introduction. You're using bits of information from the sources on this topic that are related to the main ideas some of the main ideas perhaps, which are really supposed to be intriguing. They're supposed to give us what we call the need to know. You're persuading us to want to know about this topic and you're giving us some facts about it and you, when you give facts you have to cite where they came from. So you're going to be building to your topic and as you kind of explain it in the introduction format after doing your attention getters, you will be using sources. So you definitely see there's a lot more content there in your introduction than you've done before. And then, of course, you will do your signposted preview statement. And then on the presentation, that will be the end of it. You'll stop there. You'll be done. What will have taken? 30 seconds? That would be kind of long. Something like that. Um, but then the paperwork that you'd create will have continued as if there was paperwork for the entire presentation. That preparation outline. So there'll be paperwork to put on Brightspace, pretty significant this time, and you'll give the presentation, which is very manageable still. But you can see where this is going. This is heading, what will be the next presentation, of course, is going to be a full informative presentation, which will be much more substantial and longer than we've done so far, too. Um, I think it's probably rated at six minutes or something, or something like that. I don't recall. Um, but uh, don't worry about that yet, yet, because it's going to be on a very focused topic. So it's not unlike this introduction, which could be on any topic, any informative topic. It's really up to you. Your, the true full one, which you'll be doing sometime later, will be on a very focused topic. Okay. I uh, hope that all helps, and I hope to see you in class soon, um, and that you're ready to do your makeup presentation soon, too.